A new study out this morning says that pregnant women infected by the H1N1 swine flu virus are four times as likely to be hospitalized as others, and pregnant women are also more likely to develop serious and potentially deadly complications. Our Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with more. Good morning. Good morning, Maggie. That study is reported in this morning's online medical journal, The Lancet, and says that if pregnant women get the H1N1 flu virus, they should receive treatment immediately. Also today, a federal advisory panel is recommending that pregnant women be the first in line to receive vaccinations against H1N1. More than 300 deaths from the H1N1 virus have been reported to the Centers for Disease Control. At least 15 or 6 percent of those who died were pregnant, six times the percentage of pregnant women in the general population. That's why experts say they should be the first to get the new vaccine. But for some, the vaccine may have come too late. We first told you about Kenny and Katie Flight. She was six months pregnant when she began complaining of flu-like symptoms. Running a hundred and hundred plus temperature um, with all these symptoms, they just let her go. 31 days ago, Katie developed pneumonia and suffered respiratory arrest. Doctors put her into a drug-induced coma and delivered the baby prematurely. I go and hold my daughter and it's it's like a, a breath of fresh air for a moment. Abby was born weighing less than three pounds. Doctors are encouraged by her progress. Abby has behaved exactly like a 27-week preemie, the same conditions, no evidence of having any kind of an infection. Katie isn't doing as well. Doctors say her lungs, heart, and kidneys are failing and have determined she did have the H1N1 virus. She's got a long way to go. Like I said, it's been a month, and some people don't recover from ARDS, which is what she has, the acute respiratory distress syndrome, for six months. And this is just the beginning. Since their ordeal began, oh. Kenny Flight has had to quit his construction job to spend his days caring for the couple's young son and shuttling to between two hospitals to visit his wife and daughter. Uh, it takes three quarters of the day to travel between those two hospitals and have what I would call equivalent time with both. You know, I like to sit down with my daughter in a rocking chair for a couple hours. Waiting and hoping Katie will make a recovery. I do have a two-year-old. I do have a, a newborn baby. And I do have a wife that are all going to need me. We will, afford, of course, continue to follow Kenny and Katie's story. But meantime, the word to pregnant women is, if you think you're getting the flu, see your doctor right away. Maggie. As you know, Doc, a lot of pregnant women are hesitant about getting any vaccine. So I can imagine there will be some concern about essentially being guinea pigs for a new vaccine. Right. How do you allay that concern? First of all, only 15 percent of pregnant women are vaccinated every year against the regular influenza virus. This vaccine, if it comes out, will be subject to even higher scrutiny scrutiny than vaccinations in the past. It does not contain live virus and the risks of getting the vaccine while they might not be zero are much less than the risks to the mother and the baby if they get influenza. Someone like Katie Flight, the second that she noticed flu-like symptoms, could she have taken Tamiflu? Is that safe for pregnant women? Absolutely. It is thought to be safe. And again, the risks of that medication to both the mother and the fetus are much less than the risks if both the mother and the fetus get affected with influenza. So you should take the medication. When do you think we'll see a vaccine? We're waiting every day for updates about that, but all things are pointing to possibly by mid-October if it goes through. All right. Thank you so much, you Dr. Bet. Jennifer Ashton. We'll see you later on in the program.